hey guys what is happening welcome to this video so we are at an eerie development here in northeast calgary we're going to talk about how i think things are actually going to be worse than i've been saying in my videos if you can imagine so without further ado guys let's do this Alright guys, welcome back. So believe it or not, I actually think things are going to be worse than I was actually describing in a lot of the videos I've made. You know, the thing is guys, people have been so misled, a lot of people, and lulled into a false sense of security that the economy is good, that everything is good, that they aren't going to understand when it all just goes to pot very, very quickly, which it's going to do. As interest rates move higher, we are gonna see the tightening of the money supply. We're gonna see the first ever tightening of the money supply. We now got central bankers like the Bank of Canada saying neutral is, a, is, is around 2% or 3% around that number range. And basically the thing is guys, we haven't got to rates that high since before 2008 and housing prices will revert back to those 2008 levels or likely lower than that if it continues the way it's going right now. The thing is guys, there is really nothing that can save the economy at this point. We have reached the end of the modern monetary theory era where they could just print money into obl oblivion with zero consequences. We're now at the end of that because they can't do that anymore. If you look at the way things have unra unraveled over the past couple of years, you begin to realize that things have dramatically shifted. Like when you think of what happened in 2020 and how the economy took a dive and how it's very, very, very slow, you begin to realize that, hey, there was something not right that happened then. And how on earth did 2021 then precede 2020? And 2021 was like the roaring 2021. It was like where everybody just went crazy. Every, everybody's logic just went out the window and, and it became a mania essentially. That's what a mania is. It's where all fundamentals go out the window, all logic goes out the window. And that's what we essentially saw. And now we're seeing that bleed into 2022, but that's not gonna last long and you're gonna see the complete opposite of what we saw in 2021, which is an outright depression. And the thing is, we're already in that type of environment, if you really think about it, because inflation is running so high right now that people's wages are so negative that they will literally be bankrupt within two or three years if inflation continues at the pace it's going at. So there's no saving grace for that because the Fed and the Bank of Canada, they are not gonna raise rates at the pace that they need to in order to stop inflation. But the thing is, eventually, inflation would stop if we entered a depression. And a depression in today's world would be less consumption, asset bubbles collapsing, and that's exactly what we're gonna see. That's exactly what you're gonna to have to see for inflation to stop. And inflation has to stop, whether it's the Fed, the Bank of Canada that stops it, or it's inflation itself. And let me explain. It's like I said, guys, if you think in the real world inflation rate is running around 20%, so keep that number in your head. Let's say that wages are growing 5% a year. You know, that means 15% per year people are losing to their wages. So in reality, that can only go on for a few years before everybody is bankrupt because they can't afford their bills. That eats away at the household balance sheet so quickly, so, so quickly. And that's the thing. 
they can cover up the numbers by saying, hey, you know, the CPI is this. So don't you worry, the CPI is only six, seven, eight percent. So, so don't worry, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as the 1970s. But what they're not telling you is, they've manipulated the CPI so much since the 1970s, that if we were using the CPI from the 1970s, we would be at inflation of around 20%. And you can check out Shadow Stats. I'll leave a link in the description. They actually show this in their charts. You can actually see the different measures using the 1990s basket, the 80s basket, and the 70s basket of inflation. And that is the scary thing. And then that's just a CPI measure as well. Inflation is highly personal. So if you're somebody that has to drive far to get to your job because you're working class, you can't can't afford to live in the middle of the city so you have to commute in, you're getting absolutely screwed even more because you're paying even more high price for inflation because you're having to foot a large gas bill for your commute. And you know, the thing is guys, this just doesn't end well, does it? When you've got inflation that's running this hot and you've got wages that are this negative, there's only one thing that can end it all, and that is a depression, a recession. So it starts off with a recession, like we're getting into now. The economy started slowing down in December. The economy started slowing down in December. Let me say that again. So imagine that the economy was slowing down in December. So that essentially means that interest rates, when they started rising in October, I'm talking about yields, and bonds, when the bond yields started rising in October, it was basically a couple of months and then you already started to see that impact the economy. Now we've got real rates rising, things are going deeply negative now, so it's going to be bad. People are already starting to recess because things have gone up so much in cost, it cannot continue and sustain itself this way. And people know it. They have a bad feeling at the bottom of their stomach that this isn't gonna end well. And they're not stupid. People have human intuition and it's a big thing. It really is something that people shouldn't ignore. It's that feeling that you get at the bottom of your stomach when you know something just isn't right. And a lot of people will have been getting that feeling when they've been putting in offers on homes like these. They would have been thinking, ah, oh, something just doesn't seem right, but my FOMO sense is telling me that it's a good thing to do. And I can't miss out, I can't miss out, I need a place to live, renting is a waste of money. It's all those notions that we hear all the time. But the thing is, when you realize that the whole economy is just a bubble, and it's just basically real estate, that's when you really realize how much of it is about to collapse. You see, as the housing market becomes more Ill illiquid, as liquidity dries up in the housing market, you are gonna see the economy slow down to a snail's pace, head into a recession, that at the same time you're gonna see unemployment rise, you're gonna see the cost of materials to build homes actually come back down because there's gonna be more supply of it and there's gonna be less demand at that point. But the thing is, you're not gonna see instantly home prices come back down. There's a couple of reasons for that and I really need to discuss those in an entirely separate video because it, it warrants a whole separate video to talk about it. But essentially, when you look at markets, they don't just roll over instantly. Like you're gonna have some steady declines to start off with maybe two, 3% per month or per quarter, just consistently going down. But then there will be a banking crisis because the banks will, dry up of the, all their liquidity, which they get from creating all these fudged loans and derivative products that they sell securitizing these loans. They're not gonna be doing that when nobody is taking out those loans. So then they're really in trouble because then they're also having people default on the loans and they're not making the money enough 
that they have the money to then go and pay for those defaults. And the Bank of Canada isn't there as a lifeline because they are literally doing the opposite of that. They're doing QT, not QE. QE is when they increase bank reserves so banks can increase lending. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. There's some thing that's uh, going off over there. I don't know how it's going off over there because I'm stood here on a sidewalk. So, But anyway, but yeah, they're doing the opposite. So QT is essentially quantitative tightening and they're going to start to reduce their balance sheet, which means the bank reserves that those banks had are going to be going, they're going to be gone. And essentially that means that it's, it's just going to be a complete reverse of what we've seen where they want to lend, they're not going to want to lend anymore, and that's going to pose a significant issue, which Canada really hasn't seen since the 1990s. And I'm not sure that people really understand that, because if you think about people who were in the housing market during the 1990s, well, that was a long time ago. Those people are actually like 50, 60 years old right now, and they're not on YouTube. They're not the people that people, different people speak to and everything like that. So you're gonna be seeing that, and it's gonna be quite, quite funny. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video insanely interested in what's happening right now all these new homes that have been built all these people that are just can't wait to get into them i feel really sorry for them because they've been misled by the government the central planners the moral hazards that they've had their realtors their mortgage brokers who just want to sell them loans that they don't they sell them loans or sell them houses they don't really care about them anyways anyway guys thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video please make sure to drop us a like subscribe to the channel if you want and i'll see you in the next video guys peace and love bye bye